hope you're having a great day today. Today is Friday. Happy Friday to you. I hope that your morning is going well. Hopefully by the end of the video, if it's not, that you'll have a little bit more like, ooh, exciting new day. Because you know why? Today I'm going to do something special. Today I'm going to give everyone, everyone watching, a free two-week meal plan that costs you less than a dollar. My calculations are 89 cents a meal. This is going to be per person, per person, not a whole meal, per person. So I love doing meal planning. I love trying to get my grocery bill down. For those of you that don't know me, I have 10 kids. I've been a homemaker all of my marriage, 25 plus years. I've learned to bring our grocery bill down. You might see other videos and people talking about how much they spend per month, per child, per person. And then they're like, oh, I could never get mine down that low. And a lot of those numbers, like some people say it's like a hundred hundred dollars a month or 125 dollars a month to feed their family but they also buy a cow like a cow they buy a cow you know beef and put it in their freezer or they buy in bulk some kind of salad you know staple meat so they don't include that in the price and then a lot of them go out to eat as well well for myself i'm going to give it to you for <laughs> what we do we stay home most all the time all of our meals are pretty much eaten at home so for me, I'm like, let me get that number right. We spend about 125 per person, but that includes everything. Everything you can eat. That's talking light bulbs, even though people don't, individuals need light bulbs. It's talking cleaners. It's talking filters for the house. It's the meat, it's the bean. It's everything included in that price per person. So when I did this little grocery plan, this meal plan, I'm gonna give it to you. It's a two week free meal plan. You're gonna be able to download. If you look below this video, you can go click it. It's a PDF download. You don't have to sign up for anything. You just take, it'll take you to my blog and you'll click it and you'll download it for free. I won't even ask you to sign up for Amy's blog. No, don't even sign up for Amy's blog. Just get it for free. But what it does, is it gives you a menu. So for two weeks, I'm going to give you a sample menu. It's also going to give you the recipes, how to do it. And then it's going to give you a Walmart grocery list with the prices. So I know your prices are going to be different in your area versus my area, but I just, obviously I don't know where everybody lives, but I can just put ours in. So when I added up all my groceries, the total is $148.17. Now that was for two weeks worth of meals for a family of four. Now I know my family's bigger. I just did four because I figured that's a good number to start with. Double it if you need more people, less than it if you need, you know, less people. But when you add that all up, and divide it up per person, it's less than like 25, like if you kind of figure if a person eats for $100 a month, you give yourself about $25 a week, right, per person. All right, so if you've got a family of four, in one week you would spend about 100. In two weeks you would spend 200. Well, this meal plan is for like $148, so it's actually $50 less, which is good. So that means, now I've only done breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I haven't included snacks. I haven't included cleaning products. I haven't included any of that stuff. So my recommendation after buying this stuff is get some fresh fruits and vegetables. Like right now, apples are cheap. Well, in my area, I don't know what is in your area. Find the produce that is cheap in your area and purchase that. Get some extra, get popcorn. Get a bag, a seed of popcorn and make some popcorn on your stove, in your microwave, in a paper bag. Air fryer, you know, air popper, anything, just kind of cheap, you know, just to kind of do those fillers in between. You can even get crackers, that kind of stuff. Those are still some things you can add to your meal plan that's still going to be less than $25 a week per person. So that I'm excited for this because I sat, I'm like, this is something people can physically use. This is something that I love doing, but not everybody knows how to do it. So I'm going to be sharing that with you. I'm excited to just and give it away to everybody. Everybody can have, you don't have to sign up for anything. You don't have to belong to my channel, anything. You just get it for free. So what I'll do today, I'm going to make a couple of those meals from each of them. The ones that aren't as explanatory. I won't make everything because some of it is some self-explanatory for each meal. So let's get into looking at what we're going to be making for the next two weeks. All right, let's talk breakfast here. You can do simple breakfast. You can do you can even do cereal in a box breakfast, but we're gonna actually do some making breakfasts. So I have my little meal plan right here. This is the menu of like what you're gonna make. Now, a lot of this is gonna be self-explanatory. And so if I'm gonna show you on the screen all the different meals that we're making, I'll kind of walk through, talk through like how to make them a little bit, and then we're also gonna cook some up today. Does that sound good? Okay, let's go see what we're gonna make. All right, so let's take a look at the breakfast and what we're gonna have. 
I'm gonna pop up on the screen here, the two week meal plan. So um, to begin with, we're gonna have oatmeal you, on your grocery haul. You're gonna be getting a, a container of oatmeal. I've also included sugar and cinnamon to sweeten it with. You can add a little bit, a bit of milk, whatever you like. On the back of the oatmeal, it'll tell you how to make it. For waffles on Monday, I did include a recipe in your little recipe plan here. If you don't really um, understand, it's just basically mixing the batter up. If you want to, there's plenty of YouTube videos out there of how to make basic waffles if you need that assistance. Tuesday, we have fried eggs and toast. Again, just fry some eggs on a skillet with a little bit of oil. If you don't know how to do that, Google that. There's plenty of other videos that'll show how to do that. And then Swedish pancakes. What are Swedish pancakes? Basically, it's like a thinner pancake. It's kind of like a crepe. We're actually making crepes here today. I'm gonna show you how to do that. But Swedish pancakes are more of a thinner one. That, and again, another recipe, how to make them. And then egg omelets on Thursday. Egg omelets, I said to, even in your menu, I just put how much to make, I told you to make two eggs per person. I gave you specific numbers that you don't run out of the groceries at the end of the month, the end of the two weeks. <laughs> so when I said put whatever meat, veggies, and cheese that you have on hand in there. Maybe you just have cheese. Maybe it'll just be salt and pepper, and that's it in your menu, in your um, omelets, whatever you have on hand in your home. Then we're gonna make German pancakes. We're actually gonna make those today, so I will show you. The recipe is gonna be included, but we're gonna make those today as well. And then breakfast rice. That is using leftover rice, and you're gonna put some milk, sugar, and cinnamon in it. I used to, I think I remember reading that about the, the depression days they would make breakfast rice. I don't know, people probably still do it because it's delicious, but there is an easy recipe right on here. You can Google it and find specifics as well. Then we're gonna move on to next week. We're doing hard boiled eggs in tortilla. This is something to have where you're gonna have some hard boiled eggs on hand. You're gonna take and um, heat up a tortilla, smash the egg in there, sprinkle a little bit of cheese, and I explain that all in here on your list. I even tell you how much cheddar cheese to use for that meal for that day so you don't use too much. Warm it up, it's a quick and easy breakfast. And then we're going on to pancakes. Again, recipe on here. And then yogurt with strawberry sauce. This is, you're gonna get non-fat yogurt because the ones with all the colors and flavorings and you know delicious tasting ones cost a little bit more, but you can get non-fat yogurt, a tub of it for cheap. You're gonna make your own strawberry sauce. So on here, I have you getting frozen strawberries and sugar. You're either gonna smash the strawberries, let them thaw a little bit, and then sprinkle sugar on them, put that on top, stir it into the yogurt. Hello, strawberry yogurt. Simple, healthy, and easy. Put it in a blender. Either way, food processor, but you can just mash it with a fork as well. French toast, I have the recipe on here, but you basically mix up your egg and milk mixture, dip your bread in it, and fry it on a griddle if you don't know how. Do some videos on that. Bagels I wrote down. I or I have you ordering a thing of cream cheese to go on it, but you could just put jam, peanut butter, butter, whatever you like, but you can also put an egg on there if you needed a little bit more protein that day. Crepes, we're gonna make some crepes today, so we'll watch how to do those, which will be neat. Peanut butter on toast, that's a simple, fairly easy thing to make, just spread some peanut butter on your toast. If you don't have a toaster, use an air fryer. If you don't have an air fryer, do your oven. If you don't have an oven, do it on the skillet on the stove. All these things work. All right, the first thing we're gonna make is German pancakes. We've been making these for a long time, and the reason why is because it uses a lot of eggs. Got a lot of good protein in there, but we used to have chickens, like, I think we had 35 at one time, chickens and ducks and geese, and we had an abundance of eggs. And I was like, I was my girlfriend, and she had some chickens. I'm like, what? How can I use up all these eggs? And so she said, make these German pancakes. And I'm like, hmm. So we started making these way back in the day. So I'm gonna make the measurements here that I'm gonna give to you. It's for a family of four, it's just a smaller amount. It will give you extra, but that's what I'm gonna put together in my bowl here. I'll put the recipe on the screen, but you're gonna get it in the print off super easy putting it all together one of the things you gotta do is melt some butter so I'm gonna take a quarter stick of butter just cut it like yeah butter sticks to it just cut it stick it in here put it in the microwave when it's melted you can just pull the paper off and throw it in the trash it's a lot easier than trying to unwrap and get all sticky all right while that's going we're gonna mix up the ingredients and then one other thing is I don't have regular milk that's the good thing about this I'm giving you the grocery list you probably don't need all of it like I've included everything like literally down to salt and pepper, everything that you need to make your meals. Make sure it's not gonna explode. So it has everything on there. You probably have a lot of it in your pantry. I just wanted to do right from scratch, everything you need so that way, if you're, you don't have it, you're not like, well, she didn't tell me I needed salt or, you know, because not everybody has that. So the, the grocery list is everything, everything included. So on mine, I have milk. Have you getting gallons of milk? I don't have any gallons of milk right now and that's okay, but I do have powdered milk in my pantry. So I'm gonna mix up some powdered milk. All it is is like, if you add about two cups of water, it's about a third 
cup of milk powder. So I'm just gonna mix up, it doesn't have to taste perfect. You just want enough to make it be like milk. You can even water it down if you had to. Even store-bought milk you can do. So if you see me mixing it, go, why is she doing that? It's because I don't have any store milk, but powder milk, you can mix that up. So go through your grocery list before you go to the store and go, oh, and the great thing is you can do the Walmart grocery app and not even have to go into the store, yes. But if you have to go in, go through that and go, wait a minute, I have that. I have that and mark it off. So that way you don't have to buy anything extra. And then guess what? More money in your pocket, which is good. So, all right, let's start mixing up. This is your mixture. You just keep your pan. The key is keeping that pan nice and buttered because it's going to make that batter kind of go up on the side of it, pop it up. So we're going to put this in a 350 degree oven and let it bake. All right, in the oven, we're going to put it on for about 20 minutes. We're going to check it and see if it's puffed up, but it should be good in the oven. All right, look at that. See how it's starting to curl up on the sides? This is where the magic begins. All right, look at that pancake. See how it puffs up on the sides? It will go back down, but see how it does that? It'll get a little bit more golden brown, and then it, you know that'll be done. Sometimes it puffs up in the middle. It just depends on your mixture, your eggs, everything, but that's that's a puff pancake right there, the German ones. Oh, bum, bum, bum. See that? Puffed pancake. See how that works? That's the thing that was huge on the internet, but as soon as you take it out, it's gonna fall down. All right, so this is the puffed German pancakes. This you can see is a big giant pan. There's plenty of leftovers. You can also have some for the next day, which is good, or eat double. So I just like syrup on mine. I know some people put um, brown sugar and cinnamon, like if you, if you did your butter in the bottom, and then maybe put like a half a cup of brown sugar in the bottom, just kind of stir it up a little bit. That will like create the, the syrup that you won't have to add afterwards. Just another way to do it. I love the crispy part of it. Like the corners are my favorite. So this is really good. It's just nice, it's like a eggy puff pancake. So there's your German pancakes. Delish, that's very good. All right, German pancakes are done. That's an easy meal. Put some away for another day or for a snack later. Okay, the next meal that's delicious is gonna be crepes. Now crepes are things you can get like at a fancy restaurant. I mean, but they're super simple to make. They're basically really thin pancakes. I never really thought to make them and my girlfriend made them for my kids and they were just like, these are the greatest things ever. And so you just mix up the batter. It's very simple. It's kind of, she just puts hers together and just basically sees how it looks, which is good. But I'll give you the exact recipe. And then you just put it real thin on an oil pan and we're gonna fry it and flip it over and then add some filling. All right, we're gonna make some crepes on our skillet here. You can use any kind. You can even use cast iron. I'm just gonna use this because it'll just be a little bit easier. Now in your grocery plan, I have you buying vegetable oil. I don't have vegetable oil here because I'm using what I have, so I have grapeseed oil. Again, you might have coconut oil, whatever whatever kind of stuff you have at home. Like, like I said, you don't have to follow. Mine was just what is gonna be the cheapest thing that's gonna work for 
you to have these meals. So I'm just using this. I'm gonna put a little bit on my griddle here. We're gonna let this heat up. You want this hot before you add the crepe batter to this because you want to make it nice little it makes a little pancake thing really quick and you flip it over and you boom you're done so let's let this heat up and then we're going to pour we're going to use our i got a measuring cup out i'll do about a half a cup for each one it's really simple and they just get going it's delicious all right let's heat up our pan all right now that you've got your your oil on there and it's coating i'm going to take about a half a cup just pour it in the middle and you want to turn your pan so that it's all around the bottom. You want it to be circle, and this is just going to heat up really quick. You're going to watch it. I'm going to leave it real time. It'll go real quick. All right, I left that. Sorry, I had left you like 30 seconds. I had to get another one of these because mine dropped and my hands are getting stuck on So see how that's cooked? Flip it over, boom. That's it, and it just cooks for a few seconds. So on my timer here, it's showing less than 45 seconds. They cook really fast. So when you're feeding a crowd, my girlfriend would make these for, I had 10, she had seven or eight at the time, and she would just boom, pour these out over and over and over, and the kids are like, more Miss, Miss Crystal, thank you so much. So they would get a whole lot. So this is done, let me show you. It. See? Perfect. So put it out. We're gonna stick it over here. Let's get the next one going. So let me help you a little bit. When you're making pancakes and things, do you see how there's little bubbles forming on here? This is for crepes and this is also gonna be for pancakes. When it starts bubbling, that's when you want to start flipping it over. Boom, oh, that's browning up. I'm gonna turn mine down a little bit because I have a gas and it gets hot. So this one, I'm gonna have to add some more oil to it. See how the other one was more like that? That's what you wanna look like. This is a little bit more brown. So the next part, I'll put some more oil in here. Perfect. Done. So put a little bit more of your oil. You can use vegetable oil. I'm using grapeseed oil because I have that. Just grease that bottom really good. So nothing sticks. All right, so the next thing, the crepes are done. I've got six of them on here. That's like a family of four. You can, you can make more in your grocery thing. There's plenty of flour, plenty of eggs to make extra, and milk to make extra, but this is just a basic, if you need extra food, throw in some fruit. Get, like I said, you have 50 extra dollars, and that's only spending 25 per person. That's still really cheap. Have an orange with it. That's a good thing to have. So, Or heat up a couple eggs, or fry some eggs in there to eat with it as well. Now you want to do your filling. So, obviously, Peanut butter with protein is going to be a little bit extra to it. So if you take this, put it in a little bowl, put it in your microwave, just to make it thinner so you can pour it on. This is really good. You can also put it on just spread it, but pouring is better. Jam is really good. Just sometimes you can put it in there. You might even want to add some sugar if your jam is like sugar free or just not as tasty. You can do applesauce. You can also just use syrup in the middle. All of it is all delicious. If you have, I don't in your grocery plan include, like I don't have brown sugar, but if you have brown sugar, brown sugar with a little bit of cinnamon, which I have included, mixed up together and, and microwaved is really good in the middle as well. And you can also, I also did not include powdered sugar. Uh, these are all just extras. These are just things you can add. You can sprinkle that on top and that makes it a delicious meal. I know you can go to like really nice restaurants and order a plate of crepes. <laughs> they put chocolate syrup on it, they do all those things but we make them simple at home, really easy. You saw how easy. So let's put some fillings in here and then we'll heat them on the microwave and I'll show you what it looks like.
All right, that's the delicious crepes on here. Now these are nice and hearty. This is the syrup with the, I mean, you saw me adding brown sugar to syrup. Isn't syrup just sugar? Unless you get the real stuff, so it's okay. It just makes it a little bit thicker and you don't have to. I just added it because I had it and that's the way I like my crepes, but you do whatever you want to do. So this is crepes with the brown sugar syrup and cinnamon mixture. Oh yeah. Mm. So good. Reminds me, we were kids, we used to go to Frankenmuth and they had these little, basically like, it was almost like the crepes, but they were little crispy things, like little rosettes. They had iron. You would dip in the hot oil and it tasted just like that. This is the strawberry one here. Oh yeah. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. So, so good. So this is an easy meal right here. Crepes are so good. You can eat this. This will fill you up. If you're starving, throw an egg in there or have a leftover from your German pancake or and throw in some extra protein there. That helps too. So, all right, breakfast is done. The rest of the stuff on your list here, I think is pretty self-explanatory based on how I went over it with you. So you should be able to make them. Do a quick Google, finding the rest of them. There's pretty simple how to put them together. But if you're not good in the kitchen, which I understand, not everybody is learning, you know, not everybody can cook pancakes because you probably have never done it. So do a quick Google YouTube videos. There's plenty out there of people making pancake batter so you can see how to do that. So, all right, let's get breakfast done. All right, let's talk lunches now. So we're pulling out our two week meal plan here. Lunches, the first thing we have is lentil and rice casserole. Now I do include the recipes in your print off PDF that you're going to get, but we're going to make that today. So keep watching. We're going to do that today. The next thing is peanut butter and banana sandwiches. That is just bread with peanut butter and sliced up bananas on it. I've got chicken orzo soup on Tuesday. Now for soups, all I have on here, what you're going to use, it's a can of chicken. So you're going to use some chicken that you get at the store, drain it and smash it, put that in a pot. You're going to put two chicken bouillon cubes in there and you're going to um, add any vegetables. Like there's going to be some frozen vegetables that you're going to use, some remainders that you don't have. You have a few ounces left over. Then you're going to add about a quart of water in there. Stir it up, heat it up, look at it. Okay, that looks good. When it boils, you're going to add a half a box of orzo pasta to it. And then stir that just for about a couple minutes, boil, shut it off, leave the lid on it, simmer. That's going to be delicious soup. That's an easy thing to do on there. Then we're going to do grilled cheese. So you've got bread. You can put butter on it. You don't even need butter. You can just put the bread on the skillet with the cheese. We don't even do butter on ours, but some like butter. And I tell you specifically how much cheese. I put two cheese slices in buttered bread on skillet. So you know, like, oh, am I going to use up my cheese for something else? Then we've got black beans and rice. We are going to make that as well today. So the recipe is included, but we're going to make that. Poor man pizza. Poor man pizza. We used to make this all the time. Probably just called it sandwich pizza but we can take two pieces of bread I have the thing on here and you can toast in the toaster or you can put it all together and then like do it like grilled cheese but if you toast in the toaster put pizza sauce on it sprinkle some mozzarella cheese and pepperoni slices put it together eat it like a sandwich genius love it you can do it on a skillet like green, che uh, green cheese like green cheese like grilled cheese <laughs> or you can do it in the oven as well depending on what kind of appliance you have then cabbage vegetable soup on saturday now this is the only thing that you're going to make for lunches that you're going to freeze and double so you're going to take a head of cabbage you're going to chop it up real fine put that in your soup pot do a bigger one and then you're going to put a package of your frozen mixed vegetables in here which you're going to pick up and then you're going to use and it has 12 ounces exactly what you need you're going to add some chicken bouillon cubes to there and then a can of tomato paste and then you're going to add enough water to cover the cabbage then cook it and simmer it on low for a few hours till it's soft boom soup is done then take eat that for your your lunch and then take half of it and stick it in your freezer you can put it in a ziploc bag or in a plastic container because we're going to be having that next week so that one's easy we're going on the next week look at we're having lentils and rice again you're going to know how to make that today tuna sandwiches that's basically taking your tuna fish and draining it and putting a little bit of miracle whip into it that's an easy thing um, and then we're gonna have chicken orzo soup again, which you know how to do that. And then egg salad sandwiches, that's doing hard boiled eggs. And I put down here one hard boiled egg per person, chopped up and mixed with Miracle Whip. You can use mayo, whatever you like, or mustard. 
my kids like to take it and put it in a bag with a little bit of those two things with salt and pepper and squeeze it together to create it and then cut the corner and, and then like squirt it on their sandwich. Just a neat way to do it. And then black beans and rice, we're doing that again. Quesadilla, quesadillas. And that is basically taking tortillas and then spreading on refried beans and sprinkling cheese, putting the top on and then frying it on a griddle. I tell you exactly how much cheese, it's six ounces divided out for that meal. That way you don't use too much. If you have a little bit of salsa, you can use that as well with that. And then cabbage vegetable soup, that is your lunches. Super easy, let's get into making some of these. All right, black beans and rice, this is something we enjoy. It is very simple to do. So I just wrote on the recipes, a can of black beans drain. Right here, a can of black beans drain. That's what you use now. Since I'm doing this from my home and sometimes I do things a little bit differently, I actually have dried, it's cheaper to get dried black beans, but I did not do that because I want to make it easier for you. So you can use that can, it's still cheap to get it, but I had frozen ones. What you do is if you, this is just another frugal tip, you can buy a bag of black beans, which is like a dollar. I'm pretty sure this is about a dollar, maybe 50 cents. I think it's about a dollar, you have to look. But you can take the package, you can cook them, like I cook them in my pressure cooker or on the stove, however the directions say, and then freeze them. So I freeze them. So this is actually two containers of frozen black beans. They're all thawed, I rinsed them out and drained them. I'm gonna double the recipe because I'm making this for my family. And we enjoy this. So when you see this going on the pan, go, why is mine so little? This is double. So whatever the recipe is, I'm doubling it today. All right, so I've got that in there. And then I have two cups of rice. So you have on your little plan there to buy a big bag of rice. Rice is something you can stretch. And like anytime you need a filler meal, just add more rice. And that will stretch for everybody to eat. So I'm going to add scoops. Let me show you what I'm doing three I'm doing four but it's only two for you and then I have a garlic bulb so I did include a little garlic bulb bag from Walmart I have this because I get this at Sam's Cup for five dollars it looks a little different because it's all minced, min minced up yours is just gonna be a little bulb but you can do this you can also do those bulbs you can buy dried garlic either one so this is like about one bulb so I'm gonna put two in there for mine. And then I also included chicken bouillon cubes because it was the cheapest option for you Then you didn't have to have a ton. I buy this. Our Walmart, it's the same thing, it's just not in cube form. Our Walmart has this in the um, Hispanic section and it's $5, it's only $5. But if you go to the regular chicken bouillon section, it's a, the small container is like $5. So that's where I get mine at. So I'm gonna add this to it. I have you adding four, which is about four tablespoons. I'm gonna add about eight to this. Oh yeah, I'm eyeing it, but that is what I'm gonna do for mine. And then I also have you adding thyme. I don't have thyme, you know, good Amy. So I'm just gonna add oregano, thyme, oregano, basil, either one, but I'm just adding this to it. And then if you want a little bit of spice, you don't have to, crushed red pepper just a little tiny bit because this does get hot and you can also add it later and then for every cup of rice that you put in here you put double water so i have four cups so i'm gonna have to add eight cups of water Now I'm gonna put it over here on my stove and I'm gonna heat it up a little bit. When you mix water and chicken bouillon, if it's not warm, it's hard to mix. So I'm actually gonna watch it if you don't wanna skip. If you wanna skip this step, just use warm water. I didn't, so I'm gonna heat it up for just maybe a few minutes till it gets warm and then I'll stir it. Then don't touch it. The key to good rice is don't touch it. If you go in and stir it while it's cooking, it messes it all up. I'm sure there's a science behind it, but if you don't touch, that makes it better. So we're gonna let this heat up for a minute then we'll come back and stir. All right, this is nice and hot, so I can just stir it, and everything can get mixed. Now, this will be the last time I'll stir it. Don't stir it anymore. Put your lid on. It helps to have a glass lid. If you don't have a glass lid, you're just going to have to check it and see, but if you keep it on high, now I'm going to watch it. When it comes to a boil, you're going to turn it down to as low as you can, and that's how you cook rice on your stove. If you didn't have it, you're just going to have to come keep checking with, like if you don't have a glass lid, you just have to lift it up and kind of check and see when it's at that point where it's boiling because you don't want it to boil over. So once it starts boiling, just put that lid on, leave it on, and turn it down as low as you can. It's about 10, 15 minutes. If you have a glass lid, you can watch, and I'll show you. You'll see like tiny little bubbles, kind of like the pancakes, how they made little air bubbles on there. That's how the rice will look. You'll see the little hole, it looks like holes. And then you know, boom, 
rice is almost done shut it off and let it finish with just with the lid on let it finish steaming on its own and then you have like the perfect rice so this is perfect all right let's let this boil all right see this it's starting to boil see the boiling so i'm going to turn mine down keep the lid on turn it down don't mind the dripping egg i gotta clean that down to low and just let it simmer for about 10-15 minutes all right, I told you I would show you what it looks like. Do you see? We've got about six minutes left on the 20 minutes on here. Can you see how there's the little tiny pieces of rice poking up? This is almost there. You're gonna start seeing more of the rice through the top. Then you know that it's gonna be done without scorching it or making it bad. So we're gonna let it continue to boil. Come back, it's starting to get more and more. You're starting to see little more pieces of rice. We're getting there. All right, my timer is going off. So you can see it's pretty much there. See how you have a little bit more water? I'll probably let mine go for just a couple more minutes. Not very long, but this is, can you even see? I'll take the lid off and show you in just a minute when it's, I do shut it off. You should keep the lid up, but I'm just showing it so you can actually see what you're seeing in case the water droplets are throwing it off. All right, so this is what it's looking like. See that? Just a little bit of liquid. Now you want to shut that off, leave your lid on. This will steam, it's gonna continue to bubble. That's gonna make really good rice. Super soft, not scorched or burned. All right, so here is my black beans and rice. Just came out nice and fluffy. You'll see this a little bit stickier. I mean, it's not horribly sticky, but just a little bit more sticks together. We'll see the lentils when that is done. So this is it. It's tasty, it's nutritious, it is good to eat. And you can take a bite, but it's really hot. Now, if you want it spicier, just add a little bit more red pepper flakes to your individual bowl. That's a good way to have this dish. All right, let me see. I want to take a bite, but it's so hot. It's so hot. Hello, hello, hello. Mm. This is good. It's a simple dish. We've been eating this for over 20 years. I know that. And it's really good. Easy, inexpensive way to make some food. So black beans and rice. Here you go. Lunches are done. The next thing we're gonna make is lentil rice casserole. This is something we make forever. My kids, most of my kids love it. I have two, one that does not like it, but that's okay. Not everybody loves everything. And so it has lentils and rice in it. Now, when I made my rice with my black beans and rice, I did not rinse my rice off. If you want a less sticky rice, which I'll show you, I'll show you the difference of what it looks like. And I'm gonna rinse my rice and my lentils before I cook them. I'm gonna cook mine in my pressure cooker. Now you can do the same method on your stove like I did with the black bean and the rice, which is cooking over there, or you can do it in the oven. Either way, lentils are a lot, they're dry, so they take a little bit longer to cook, but not as bad much as like a dried black bean. And so we're just gonna do it in the pressure cooker because it's easy, it turns out delicious. But if you don't have this, you can use a slow cooker. You can Google like how long to cook rice in a slow cooker or how long to cook lentils. It depends on what rice you have. I gave you parboiled rice, but Google that. It'll tell you exactly what setting to put for your slow cooker. So let's measure out. I'm gonna make lentils. I'm gonna do double the recipe because we love it. So when you see it double, you're like, why is it so much more than mine? Because I'm doubling for my family. I'm gonna put it over in my little strainer here. I have a rice strainer. And so I'm gonna put it in here, rinse it out first, and then we'll add. So I'm gonna measure it out and then rinse it. I have a huge container of lentils. I gave you a bag. Of it, it's one pound, which is 16 ounces. So it's about two cups of lentils that you're gonna add for one recipe. Now this is something I've never done before. I never rinsed my rice. I didn't even wash my dried beans. I know, people are like, that's awful. I just never did. I couldn't figure anything. I couldn't get a high temperature. It's gonna kill whatever it is. And I promise you, nobody's died from anything. We haven't even had any massive illnesses or diseases. But I have sort of mentioned, thank you guys. And the rice does come out way better when it is rinsed. And so, do you like that fluffier rice where it's not stuck together? This is what you wanna do is rinse it. So you just kind of rinse until the water runs clear. Once it's clear, then it doesn't have to get to look like all that starch stuff gone. So we're gonna keep rinsing. All right, for the lentils. So I've doubled my recipe, remember that. When you look at it, go, why is there so much? I have two tablespoons of minced onion. I had you buy dried minced onions. Okay, since I'm the one doing the video, you know, I don't have everything on hand like I told you. I looked at my pantry, I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm out of minced onions. But I did have real onions, so I'm adding 
half of a, so you would add like a quarter of a chopped onion. But to see, again, it's about getting up your fragments and what you have. That's what we speak of all the time. So I'm adding a half of a real onion in here. You don't have to, it's just what I had. Now remember that, and you're like, why is it so much less than the two tablespoons? A minced onion is going to be much more potent. Like a fresh onion is gonna have, you're gonna need more of. The, the, the chopped one is gonna be a little bit, you're gonna need less of. The ground up kind is gonna be even stronger, so you're gonna need even less. So you wouldn't get two tablespoons of, you know, what is it, the powdered onion. No, that would be way too much. So add that in there, and then you're gonna add water. So I've measured up my water here and it's gonna be 12 cups for me, only six cups for you. Again, you're adding time, which I don't have. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> and so I'm gonna add my oregano. Oregano takes the place of everything, you burn out, but get some time. Time makes it good too, but you have that already on your list. And then I'm gonna add my um, chicken bouillon. I'm doing this and measure out kind of like based on the cubes I told you, along with the water and then the garlic. I don't have garlic bulbs, so the minced garlic I'll use. All right, so mine, I'm gonna put in my pressure cooker right here. This is how easy the pressure cooker is. Put this on. And then I'm gonna do my brown rice setting, which is medium, and it takes about 15 minutes now. Do you need a pressure cooker? No, absolutely not. You can do it in your slow cooker. Google the times so how long to cook rice for in your slow cooker. Then it will help you. You can also cook it on the stove, like I did the black beans and rice too. Don't need this, but if you were to invest in a kitchen gadget, I have a lot. I've done a lot of reviews of different things. And what is something I have replaced my slow cookers with the pressure cooker. That heats up doesn't work. Lunch is done. That's a good thing to have. So those are our lunches. All right, lentils are done. Delicious. Again, super hot. <laughs> Just came out of the pressure cooker. These are really, really good though. If you don't like lentils, try this. This is a recipe. I don't usually like lentil soup or split pea soup or any of those, but this is really good. Oh yeah, mm. Mm -hmm. and my kids really like this. There's only one that does not like lentils and that's okay, but the rest do. You can put this on a tortilla and roll it up and wrap it up and eat it that way as well. Just a simple way to get that the meatless luncheon, fill your belly. That's the key to eating, right? Is there's a purpose to eating, to give you energy to fill your belly. Right here, that's a good meal, really quick and easy. We have this, we're gonna love it for lunches, so. Lentils and rice. Oh, yeah. All right, lunches are made. Let's talk dinners. I'm gonna show you the menu plan here on the screen and then I'm gonna walk you through the meals because a lot of them are, like I said, self-explanatory, but just in case it's not clear, you're not familiar with the type of foods that I make, I'm gonna share those with you. So for our first day, we have taco salad. This is just taking one pound of ground beef. Now. Let me go real quick here. I'm gonna recommend you cooking all of your ground beef at one time, as soon as you get it from the store. I'll show you what mine looks like. I cook it all and then I freeze it. I actually add chopped veggies, every single chopped veggie I have. I'll show you mine, it looks almost green and you're like, that's so gross. <laughs> Let me show you. This is thawed. See how it's green? I added spinach to this, um, carrots and peppers and onions. We had any kind of mixed vegetables that we had available, I chopped up and put in my meat. It adds flavor. And it also adds a lot of good nutrients that your kids will never even notice. So when you get your big package of meat, cook it all up and put it in the freezer in Ziploc bags or in little plastic containers and let it cook. Then when you go to use it, you can thaw it. So, all right, let's get back to our menu. So we've got our taco salad. So take one pound of your ground beef. You're gonna have to ration it out. So make sure you know how much is one pound. It's about two cups. And you're gonna cook it with one package of taco seasoning. And then all you're gonna do is chop one head of lettuce and then this is for four people. You're gonna divide that up on your plates and then you're gonna put some of your taco meat on there and then you're gonna ration out your six ounces of shredded cheese. You're gonna put salsa. I actually put divide out one cup and corn chips. That's an easy, easy meal. Now we're gonna go on to chicken and rice made simple. For that one, you're gonna put, you're gonna get a whole chicken, I know. So you're gonna get a lot of food for this meal. Put a big chicken, It's I have it on your warmer order, in a crock pot or in the oven. You can do this either way. Then you're gonna mix up the rest of the ingredients, the rice, the onion, the cream of mushroom, soup, 
boiling on in water, and then you're gonna pour it on top. You're gonna bake it from four to six hours. You can also, and I put a little asterisk there, and put save some chicken pieces for ramen. That's gonna be another meal that you're gonna save some of. That's a lot of extra chicken. Then you've got, on Tuesday, chili beans and spaghetti. This is a, a poor man's supper that we actually really love, and we still do this now. We don't even have to be having no money, and it's really good. <laughs> Basically, spaghetti, pasta cooked, and then all you do is pour chili beans on it from a can. Very easy. You can put shredded cheese on it, top it with salsa and sour cream as well. We even use crushed saltine crackers, makes it really good. I don't know why, it's just a really good flavor. Then on Wednesday, you're gonna do fried rice. This is really simple. You're gonna cook your rice beforehand, maybe the day before, so that it's all not so hot. It's, sometimes when you make it fresh, it's a little more mushy. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna heat your oil in the skillet. You're gonna cook four of the eggs that are scrambled up. Take those out, then you wipe off your pan so that it doesn't have the egg mixture, and then you're gonna add bacon bits. Yes, bacon makes fried rice delicious. The mixed vegetables, the frozen one, heat it up, and then you're gonna add your rice, stir it up, and you're gonna add soy sauce with your egg. It is so, so good. Then you're gonna go on to your chicken pot pie. This is really simple as well. If you got a pie crust, if you don't have a pie crust, use a rectangle or square shaped pan and just fold, make, roll your dough out a little bit to make it more square. You're gonna put pie crust down, then you're gonna take a can of chicken, you're gonna drain it up, and then you're gonna put that on there, kind of smash out the chicken so it's you know, separated a little bit. You're gonna add a can of mixed vegetables that are drained, and then pour two cans of cream of mushroom, or cream of chicken soup, not mushroom, chicken soup on top, and then put the other pie crust on it, put little slits, bake it at 350 in the oven for 45 minutes. That's really easy to do. Burrito tacos, you're gonna take a one can of refried beans, you're gonna mix it with a pound of cooked hamburger and taco seasoning, and a cup of salsa. Put those on the tortilla, and you can chop it with chopped lettuce, and sour cream, that's really simple. And then Saturday you have hamburger stroganoff. What you're gonna do is you're gonna cook your hamburger with onion, you're gonna add a can of cream and mushroom soup, and then you're gonna cook a package of the wide curly noodles, and then you're just gonna mix it all together and put sour cream in it. That's really easy and something we love having. Then go to the next week, you've got ramen noodles with chicken. Ramen, yes I know it's not healthy, but you know ramen everybody loves. And you got every video out there about souping up ramen because it's really easy to do and can be very filling and it's super inexpensive. So take regular ramen, whatever you like. Get the oriental one, is really good. Add shredded chicken from your leftover chicken and any mixed vegetables from the freezer, the frozen mix. And then you can also add soy sauce and red pepper flakes to spice it up. That is a simple, easy thing to do. You can even add egg to it. You can kind of put your egg in there and let it boil or fry it and add it in. That's a really easy way to make a inexpensive dinner. Then we're going to haystacks. If you do not know what a haystack is, we've been making these forever. Another great way to feed a large, large crowd inexpensively. You're gonna have cooked rice, you're gonna have refried beans and hamburger cooked with taco seasoning. What you do is you layer this. On your plate, you put rice, cooked rice, put some refried beans, then hamburger with the taco seasoning, then lettuce, the cheese, salsa, and sour cream. This is so good, very filling, and you can feed a whole crowd of people with this for inexpensive. Then I've got spaghetti, that's easy, right? Just noodles, a jar of sauce, and hamburger, really easy. You can also make garlic bread by spreading it with butter and sprinkling on your Italian seasoning that you have and crushed garlic. Bake it in the oven and bro or broil it for a few minutes or put in the toaster, either one however you want to do it. Then we're going to go on to sloppy joe tater tot casserole. This will make a lot as well. You're going to have two pounds of ground beef for this one. And you're going to add two cans of sloppy joe mix. Mix it all up. Put in a 9 by 13 pan. Top it with the tater tots you're getting. And then those leftover cheese slices because there's a lot. Put those on top and bake it until bubbly. Then taco soup. I'm actually going to make that for you today. So I'll show you that in a minute. And pepperoni pizza bake. This is really good and yummy. All you do is take your biscuits a can of refrigerator biscuits, cut it into eight pieces, like one of them into eight pieces. Toss that with pizza sauce and one cup of cheese in a bowl, stir it up. Put that in a, a greased baking dish. Then you're gonna top it with your pepperoni, kind of like layer it all over like you would a lasagna, and then sprinkle one cup of cheese. Bake it for 20 minutes at 350. That's a really yummy, delicious, simple meal. And then skillet mac and cheese. I'm gonna make that with you as well. All right, don't mind everything going on here. I'm cleaning and cooking and everything else over there. So let's do the taco soup. This is really easy. Basically, it's like a chili. Really simple to put together. So I'm doubling it. So I'm gonna show you what mine looks like. Now this is my pasta, my meat. I've already heated it up. It may look a little green, but <laughs> that's because we have you know spinach and let me get you over there. Spinach and all the delicious stuff in there. So all you're gonna do to this is add a package of your taco seasoning to it and then stir that up so it's all mixed up 
if you are starting with really dry meat, add a little bit of water to it too. Mine's already got some of the liquid because it was frozen. Just stir that so it's all mixed up really good. Look at that. And then you're gonna add a can of diced tomatoes. I have a larger one because I'm doubling it. I like the petite ones. My kids are not big tomato fans. So when they see those big chunks of tomatoes, they're always like, what is that? So I always like to add the smaller ones. Then you're gonna add a can of kidney beans, chili beans, and corn. Don't drain them because the liquid will add some nutrients to it. And it works out really good. Now again, I don't have any kidney beans because, you know, I didn't plan that way. Actually, I wasn't even gonna make this particular dish, but, oops. So I had to use what I can. So I'm just gonna add um, a couple extra kidney beans, uh, chili beans instead of kidney, but it's all the same. So this is it, let's stir this up. This is delicious. Look at that. That's it, this one is done. This is a really simple dish. Now I make mine normally. I like to add a package of ranch powder to it. You don't have to, that's just the way that we make it. And then I also like to add a can of diced green chilies to make it a little spicier, but you could add the crushed red pepper that you have to make it a little bit spicier. Now when you serve this, you can serve in a bowl with tortilla chips, corn chips. I have that in your, your grocery list there, but you can also just have it plain, but this is very filling. If you need to stretch it out more, I have more liquid. That's the, the wonderfulness of making these meals. You can also put this over rice that's a good way to fill and stretch let's say you have a lot of it you don't end up eating it and you're like Ugh, we don't love this soup we'll make some rice and put it over rice and make that haystack thing i was talking about like a little bit of lettuce and the cheese all that sour cream it just adds it up you can also put it over pasta and do like a and add some cheese and do like a chili mac dish as well so boom that one's done look at that it was literally poured all together in the pot i'm finished love that way to make that meal all right the taco soup is done Again, I gathered my fragrance. I didn't have corn chips here, please forgive me. I have corn chips for you and your recipe. I didn't have any at home, but I do have leftover scoops from the holidays. I like the corn chips better, so this is not even more better for me. I just wanted to show you what it looks like, but this is it. I put a little bit of cheese on mine. You don't have to. I literally put less than a tablespoon on there. Stir this and eat it. It is delicious. Now, in your recipes, and your menus, I've also included how much to ration out because I think one of the biggest things is when you go like once a month shopping, people are like, how do you get people not to eat or well, how do you not eat too much? You have to know how much you use. There's been plenty of times where we're like, ugh, I use that sour cream for that recipe or I use that for that. So I've already done the work for you. Even when it comes to your toppings of how much to put on your chili. So on your taco chili here, I put, let's divide out four ounces. And your salsa is, well, I didn't put salsa on here because I didn't really want salsa on mine, but you can. So I put salsa, divide out one cup. So that way you know how much you have. So you have plenty for the two weeks. Now, if you love salsa and you want to have way more, then get an extra jar of salsa. You've got a lot of extra money for the week there. It's less than that $25 a person for all those meals, which is really, really good. So, all right, here, I'm going to go eat mine. You can take this and scoop it up. You can get the regular, if you don't like the corn chips I put on there, I think they were a dollar a bag. You can get like these kind of tortilla chips. Now, not the scoops, this is leftover from Christmas. Fresh, but you can get like just regular round tortilla chips for about the same price too. So I'm gonna go eat my, I know it's delicious. Let me start, I used my spoon here for my sour cream, but I know this is good because I make this all the time. This is really good. Mm -hmm. This is good and you see that made a big pot. I actually added a little bit double, but half of that would still be a lot of pot of, of chili taco soup for your family. So, and if you couldn't, you wanted to add a little bit more, just add a few more chili beans to it. That will stretch that pot of soup out so you have plenty for the next few days. So if you knew that you were, oh, maybe a little bit hungry, more hungry, and you want more fuller, get a couple extra cans of chili beans and put those in there, or even just red beans, anything. You can get dry beans in the bag. You put black, you put any color beans in there. It does not matter, just to help fill it or put it over rice, either way. So here's your taco chili. All right, so the next thing we're gonna make is our skillet cheeseburger mac and cheese. That was cool. <laughs> it is. Look like, at that, it's called. So I told you to put hamburger, which remember you're cooking your hamburger in bulk. Don't, don't worry, try it. You'll love the fact that you've got that all done and not have to worry about cooking the meat because that takes the longest. And then you just heat it up. You can take it out the night before and thought, I didn't. I took it out today and just heated it up. 
in the microwave to thaw it. So I have you adding minced onion to it. I don't have it, so I put my fresh onion in here. So let me put it in here and cook it. If you have extra onions, this is a dish that you want to taste more of the oniony part because it's more like the burger and the onion. So we're just gonna heat this up over here and fry it. I've already cooked my pasta right here. So I'm actually going to put mine all in a nine by 13 pan. You can do it on the stove. I'm going to put it in a pan because we're not going to eat it right now. I would say grease your pan. Um, you can get spray grease. I didn't include that in your grocery. All you have to do is take your vegetable oil, take a little piece of like parchment paper or even paper towel and just wipe the bottom of your pan. That's all you need. Very simple. Not even have to worry about spray cans and it's cheap. So we're going to do that and then add the pasta. All right, so I've got the skillet mac and cheese here. I'm like, I can't help myself. We ha we've made this a long time ago. I used to add bacon bits to it to make it like cheeseburger, bacon cheeseburger. So I added a little bit of bacon bits. I know I'm like, follow the instructions, Amy. I don't because I make, I cook like by taste and I cook by how I see something. So I added bacon bits. If you've got leftover bacon bits, add it. But if you don't, it's okay. Cheeseburger plain is good too, but cheeseburger bacon, oh, so good. So what you're going to do to this, I'm following my recipe, you're going to add a little bit of garlic. You're going to add two cloves, two cloves, two cloves. So I'm going to do, I'd be like a little, there we go, scoop in there. Because you're going to be adding tomato sauce and there's no flavor in the tomato sauce. There's not even any salt. So this is my tomato sauce. I have you adding a jar of it, like a can, but I have mine in bulk. So I had to ration mine out to get the right 16 ounces that you need. So when you're stirring this up, let me show it to you. All right, so it's looking like this. Now, tomato sauce, again, has no flavor. So, I mean, it just doesn't have salt. So you're gonna add some salt, a teaspoon of salt, and you're actually gonna add a teaspoon of sugar. I know, what, sugar? Yes, you add sugar to your sauce. Stir that up. And look at that, it's got a nice meaty mixture. That's perfect. Now you're gonna add a cup of milk and cheese. Now I'm gonna come over here so you can see a whole lot better. It's better than seeing on the stove. You can continue making this on the stove. I'm just gonna do it over here for lighting purposes. So what you're gonna do is, I've got my pasta here. I had to Google, because I buy my pasta in bulk, and I'm like, how much is a pound of pasta? But a pound of pasta dries about four cups, and I have that exact measurement that you're gonna purchase. So I'm like, is this a lot of pasta? But it's not. So in my pot, let's, let's mix up what I'm gonna do, here's my cup of milk. I've already stored it, stored it. I've already stirred it. And then it's two cups of shredded cheese. Mine is frozen, because you know, we're gathering up our fragments. I freeze my cheese. If you can find cheese on sale, get it on sale and freeze it. It will last. And all you do is stir this. Look at that. And it's gonna melt. Mine's not going to melt completely because I don't have it on the stove, you know, and the countertop doesn't actually cook or heat it, but it will heat up and melt a little bit. I'm actually going to do it in here because, you know, that's like a real tight stir. So we're going to put this back in here. Don't, don't put it in a pan. Stir it in your pot first. Look at this. Look at delicious. Oh, yes. Skillet cheeseburger pasta. Look at how delicious that is. Look at that. That looks so, so good. Let's pour that in our pan now. Oh yes, look at this. That's a lot of pasta. That's definitely plenty of pasta. This is a whole lot of pasta in here for a family of four. Oh yes, and which is great because you're making it on a Saturday and for lunch you had cabbage vegetable soup which will not fill you up that much but it will fill your belly but now you've got a huge extra dinner night that's what i kind of did when i did the recipes i kind of made some things that weren't as filling and then you have like a heartier meal the other way so that works let's try some of this look at this um yes this is delicious think of remember like does anybody else grow up eating hamburger helper i did haven't bought hamburger helper i don't think i ever did i might have in the beginning but you can make it homemade so this is it Mm. Delicious. Now I have the bacon one because I remember the cheeseburger bacon hamburger helper. You don't have to. You can just have hamburger. It's a good thing. So easy way. You saw how I made this. Super simple. You can make it for your family today. Mm. There we 
right there is good, my friends. All right, and you can eat as much as you want. Oh, there's a whole big pan there. Plenty of leftovers for whenever you need it, so. All right, I'm gonna go eat this. Let me go, let me go eat this. All right, so I hope you enjoyed today's video of all these great meal ideas. Look at all those over there. My kids are like, what is that delicious smell, mom? I'm like, I know, it's breakfast, lunch, and dinner all before breakfast. <laughs> So, I hope you enjoyed it today. Remember, go click below the video, there's a description, and you click it and you'll see the link to the free two-week meal plan. I'm gonna give it to you free. You don't have to be a subscriber to my channel. You don't have to like my videos. You don't even have to like watching me, but go save yourself some money. Why would you not do that? I mean, everybody should go save themselves some money, right? I won't even make a sign up on my blog. It's all free, it's free. I'm just giving it to you, no? No attachments, people are always like, well, there's always a catch. There's no catch, just have them for free. Just be blessed, just go, wow, I can sit, um, feed my family for cheap. So remember, these are all for four, a family of four, four people. Let's say it's just two of you. So you can either cut these in half, like the ingredients, or better yet, do it for the month. Oh, you could have a month's worth of groceries for two people for this price. Yes, it would cost you $150 for the whole month for two people. Look at that, that's a good deal. And you still have extra money. That's really cheap. People always think, no, just in large families, you can make things cheap because you can buy in bulk. It's a whole lot more expensive when you gotta cook for just a few people. That is such a fallacy and a lie. That is not true. You saw everything I'm making here today and I'm giving you all the ideas on here. These are good meals. They are not just like box macaroni and cheese and hot dogs. They are not just quick processed food. There's like cans of cream and mushroom soup, things like that. You can make all that homemade, but we're, we're cutting corners where it's necessary and not you know, something you have to do. So this is more like real, I have to think, what do people really want to do? Do they wanna make their own homemade yogurt? Probably not, I would. <laughs> but to buy it, it's not a big deal to buy that because it's not that expensive, but you can definitely cut down this list even further by doing it way more cheaper. So it just depends on what kind of needs you have for your family. But for less than a dollar per meal for a person, 89 cents in my region, ugh, yeah, winner. So go get this right below free just take it for free be blessed know that i'm praying for you thankfully you guys are here and i hope you enjoy your day i'm gonna go now for those that want to watch our we read a psalm every day so you can stay and watch that for those of you that don't that's okay have a fantastic weekend come back again because i'm gonna be doing some more of these if you guys like them let me know in the comment section below i love free food menu plans let me know that because if you do i'll make more but if you just say no maybe this is a dumb idea <laughs> then i'll never do this again <laughs> but if you want that let me know because I can do it for a week, I can do it for a month, I can do this because I do this in my sleep because we've done it so much. So let me know what kind of, you know, if you want more meal plans and all the grocery list and all of that for you, I'll give it to you. Have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll see you on Monday if you guys come back. And then the rest of you stay here. I'm gonna go sit at my computer and we'll read our book of Psalm. All right, for those of you that are gonna stay, I'm glad you're here, we're gonna read Psalm. We're reading Psalm 10 today and it's a prayer for the overthrow of the wicked. Why do you stand far away, O Lord? Why do you hide yourself, veiling your eyes in times of trouble? Mm, do you ever think that the Lord just doesn't see? Do you think that he just hides his eyes? He doesn't. In pride and arrogance, the wicked hotly pursue and persecute the afflicted. Let them be caught in the plot which they have devised. Mm, sometimes you think that, right? Because there's so much going on right now. So much going on and you hear stories and you're like, oh, people are oh, just... It, you want this prayer. <laughs> For the wicked boasts and sings the praises of his heart's desire. And the greedy man curses and spurns and even despises the Lord. The wicked in the haughtiness of his face will not seek nor inquire for him. All his thoughts are, there is no God. So there is no accountability or punishment. When there's no God, people think, who are you accountable to, right? You can do whatever you want. His ways prosper at all times. Your judgments, Lord, are on high out of his sight, so he never thinks about them. As for all his enemies, he sneers at them. He says to himself, I will not be moved, for throughout all generations I will not be in adversity, for nothing bad will happen to me. His mouth is full of curses and deceit, fraud and oppression. Under his tongue is mischief and wickedness, injustice and sin. He lurks in ambush in the villages. In hiding places, he kills the innocent. He lies in wait for the unfortunate, the unhappy, the poor, the helpless. He lurks in a hiding place like a lion in his lair. He lies in wait to catch the afflicted. He catches the afflicted when he draws him into his net. Do you sometimes people think people have like devious plans? They're trying to trick everybody into like a web of deceit. 
it's here. He crushes his prey and crouches, and the unfortunate fall by his mighty claws. He says to himself, God has quite forgotten. He has hidden his face. He will never see my deed. Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up your hand in judgment. Do not forget the suffering. Why has the wicked spurned and shown disrespect to God? He has said to himself, you will not require me to account. You have seen it, for you have noted mischief and vexation, irritation to take it into your hand. The unfortunate commits himself to you. You are the helper of the fatherless. Break the arm of the wicked and the evildoer. Seek out his wickedness until you find no more. The Lord is king forever and ever. The nations will perish from his land. O oh Lord, you have heard the desire of the humble and oppressed. You will strengthen their heart. You will incline your ear to hear, to vindicate and obtain justice for the fatherless and the oppressed, so that man who is of the earth will no longer terrify them. Hmm. The man that is of the earth will no longer terrify him. Sometimes do we have a prayer for the to overthrow the wicked? Sometimes do we just want to pour out our heart to the Lord and just like, ugh, there's so much evil on the earth. This was written a long time ago and there's a lot of evil written in the Bible about what was happening on the earth. So good reading today. All right, you have a fantastic, I mean, fantastic rest of your day. And I'll see you tomorrow if you want Abundantly Blessed. I'll be there and then uh, we'll see you again on Monday. All right, have a great rest of your Friday. We'll see you. Bye.